Aloha YouTube, this is Kai Turner, and today I'm going to review why the Vivo Next is far superior to the Oppo Find X. So as you can see, like always, we got the Aqua Ninja merch, links in the description below. And the Vivo side with the Next line is, it's freaking incredible. Now, let's go over some of the features of the Vivo. Now, I know a lot of you guys are wondering like, well, both of these phones are super futuristic, they're super cool in their inception, and they both have a lot of awesome, cool features, right? But I'm going to tell you why the Vivo variant is way better than the Oppo phone. Now, both of these uh, Asianic brands are synonymous with cutting-edge technology and making cool, futuristic-looking devices. But one reigns supreme for a myriad of reasons, which we're about to go over right now. If you like these type of videos, subscribe to the channel, get your comment in there, talk about what we should talk about next, and let's get straight into this. So with the Vivo Next, we have impressive stats of a 6.59 inch screen, 1080p of course, 12 megapixel camera, 8 gigabytes of RAM via Snapdragon 845 of course, 4,000 milliamp hour battery and the crazy impressive features are that the screen to body ratio is an impressive 86% that's far superior to any other phone in the market right now including the iPhone X and uh, Samsung Galaxy uh, Note 9 or S9 now the end the end screen fingerprint reader is why I say that this phone is far ahead of its time right it's one of the first phones to launch with an in-screen fingerprint reader. And you might say, well, there's I've heard about this concept phone that did that, or I've heard about this brand that did that, but this is a commercial phone that you can buy in practically any Asianic market. And obviously, you can get it shipped to America if you just pay the import taxes. So with a phone that's this commercially available, with literally all screen and body ratio and still incorporating the fingerprint and having a back camera it really is a practical futuristic phone because if you think about it what separates this from the oppo is the oppo is just solely trying to say we have the best screen to body ratio we have the best display that's important and all but it's kind of like apple where they're more into functionality versus samsung which is more into I'd say having the best specs. It depends on which market you're really going for. You know what I mean? Like there's two different ideologies there. Vivo is 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 trying to make an actually practical futuristic phone. The front camera is super vital to this because it only comes out to show you front facing camera stuff. You know what I mean? Like if you wanted to take a selfie. That's literally the only time it comes out just to take selfies versus the Oppo phone, which literally has to do that every time you unlock your phone and every time you want to use the front camera and every time you want to use the back camera. So on Oppo's case, let's go over Oppo specs. Now, Oppo, on the other hand, has an impressive screen, which is 6.42 inches, 1080p, of course, 16 megapixel camera, which is actually better than the uh, Vivo Nex. 8 gigabytes of RAM via Snapdragon 845, of course, and a 7330 milliamp hour battery, which is smaller than the next. So, comparatively, you would notice that the cameras are better, and the obvious huge bump in the screen is going to be uh, better. Also, the screen to body ratio is, they estimate, a 91%. So it, it's a little bit bigger and a little bit better because of the, the bezels are literally non-existent. I mean, they're super duper duper tiny on the top and the bottom. So this phone screen wise is better and camera wise is debatable, but most people would say it's a little bit better. That's it though. It's very, very impractical because obviously you have a moving part just like the next, but the difference is this moving part has to is tied into their unlock system, just like Face ID. Imagine if Face ID had to, you know, move in order to, you know, unlock your phone. 
it wouldn't be that practical. And this is why the Find X, I feel like, is not really a futuristic driven phone. It's a phone that's just trying to prove a concept that says we can have a better screen and body ratio than anybody else on the market right now, which they, they achieved that. They achieved their goal. But it's not a futuristic flagship that's realistic because more often than not, we'll just say on average, you unlock your phone a low number 50 times a day, right? 50 times a day, you unlock your phone. That means in the course of one year, so one year, let's, let's, let's even bring out a calendar, right? The calculator right now. 365 times 50 times unlock your phone. That's 18,250 times that your camera is going to pop out. That's in one year. Now, let's be realistic. Most people take pictures. And if you're a girl, you're going to take a lot of selfies. So you're going to take all of these pictures, which means each time you take out your phone to take a picture, that's an additional time that your, you know, your camera has to be ejected. So we can easily see this camera being pulled out 200, 300, 400,000 plus times in the course of two to three years. Now, I'm not saying that their mechanism isn't a good mechanism, but even the most, and we have already seen via you jerry rig everything, that even the most secure structures are going to have some type of fail rate. So with this, it's like, why would we even trust a system that has this potential failure versus a system that doesn't rely on it? That's where next, the Vivo Next really, really, really hit home with a concept that makes practical sense. It doesn't need the camera. You never have to pull out the camera. It's only for selfies. That's it's just a cool feature so that they can put the selfie camera somewhere, but it doesn't affect the user experience at all. That's why they had the fingerprint scanner, just like 98% of the other flagship phones of nowadays. They have it on the front or the back or whatever. In the future, phones would just be one continuous screen with an in screen fingerprint scanner, and that way it alleviates 98% of the problems that you might face. This phone is really thinking about the future. It's already got a massively crazy screen and body ratio, in finger, in in screen fingerprint scanner, and the dual camera setup on the back. It's literally ready to go. I mean, it, that's that's pretty much what flagship phones of tomorrow will look like. Now, I can already see a lot of phone manufacturers taking a few hints and notes from this and developing their own, you know, production flagship. But when we think about practicality. You'll only probably pull out your Vivo Next cam front-facing camera if you're selfies and you're taking your girl, let's say, 40,000 to 100,000 times, right? So way less stress on it because it's not your front camera and your back camera and your unlocking system like the the uh, the the Apple, um, yeah, the Apple Find X. It's only serving one of those three purposes. So in theory. This camera would not have to be as rugged, as durable as that camera.